Hey everyone, now that we do actual video recordings automatically of people visiting our website so that we can see what we're doing wrong, um, we can see how often websites won't make nearly enough money, they don't get sales uh, for their owners. Probably 80% of websites when they're first created have problems. Uh, they've got navigation problems, they've got clarification problems, they have broken pages, they have buttons or links that won't push or click. Uh, and especially on different devices like a tablet or a laptop or a mobile device, if you don't go checking or watching other people who are using the devices when they come to your website in the first place, uh, then you really don't realize that not everything lines up properly. And sometimes there are just common sense mistakes you make that confuse people. So the business of making your website profitable must include watching how people interact on the brand new website you just launched. Right, Because if you ignore that step, you just won't make much money. I think the problems we've seen hit at least four out of five websites right out the gate. Uh, you wouldn't seem like that until you get into it, but then you start to realize it's very, very true. So let me show you three I caught on this website, just this website alone. Then I'm gonna tell you one story real quick, and I've, I've said it in different videos. Then I'm gonna show you another case from somebody else and explain that one because that was interesting too. The kind of thing you can never see on your own, really, unless you watch other people. First one's this. When we tell people to claim this position, we say go there, go through the motions to claim, and then when you go to do it, it's going to have you register. And then you register as a position holder, and then you continue. You'll go into your account and you claim the position. Well, here's what we find a lot of people did. They would register first. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nay, says I. <laughs> do not register here. Because when you do, it thinks you're a different kind of system or a different kind of user. There are three kinds of users in this system. And once you register here, it doesn't allow you to use the same phone number and email address to register there. So a lot, it'll just tell people, hey, can't find your phone number or can't log you in or um, not allowed or not authorized. And you're like, what the heck? So this one's going to be hidden for a while um, because we don't actually need it here for what we're doing these days. So I'm just going to hide it. And then for the people log in, right, there's the common sense part of it. If they log in, I don't want them to see this. Okay. So I won't even allow them to see that. Okay. So they'll just uh, come in as a position holder. That's the idea. So that's us structuring things. The account type could be different. It could be like this, but then they'd be confused. It could be like that. They'll be confused if this is what they're after. So this is the direction we're going right now on this end. So that's why I'm arranging it this way. The point is this makes sense. So this is going to go and this button is gonna be hidden. And that way people can't accidentally go in the wrong direction and therefore get stuck and frustrated and have no idea why, okay? Huge, and I figured that out by watching people hit this and I was thinking, why are you going there? Literally, to me it was intuitive that they shouldn't do that. I told them go here, but of course people are different. They're not very used to the website and many of them will think to go there. Duh, <laughs> so it's my fault. There's one. What's the next one? All right. When, um, oh, I'll show you this one. When somebody came and hit affiliates, and I've seen this more than once by now, uh, where they go to sign up as an affiliate, and again, this is something we haven't focused on recently. We've been so busy with all the new coding stuff, but then the guy will think, oh, yeah, that's right. I want to see how much money I can make as an affiliate. So he comes off of this thing, and he starts to scroll up, and I'm thinking, yeah, sure, click it. After all, that's the link right there, okay? That right there. But he didn't, did he? He went right past it and he clicked this. You know what the problem is? This doesn't make any sense to him now. What is it? your website's current number of daily leads? He's thinking, but I don't have a website. I have to have a website to be an affiliate? And the answer is no, you don't. You are looking at the wrong calculator. But the guy who looks at this one doesn't know that. And then I watch him do something like this and just kind of get here and go, I don't get it. And then they'll leave, right? Whose fault is that? Mine. <laughs> but if I didn't watch other people navigate through my site, I wouldn't see those mistakes. What do I need to do? On this affiliates link, what do I need to do? Make this a lot more obvious. 
make this clickable as well to the same place. You know, even maybe make that clickable to the same place so that all of this is clickable to the, the calculator and it's bigger print, um, a little more obvious somehow, right? Calculate your profits. I could reword this to talk about the idea of um, website profits, you know, calculate your website profits, something else uh, to make it make more sense as a user. Okay, that's two problems, right? One of them is the registration button that should not be there. The second one is this is so confusing that people hit the wrong calculator. What's the third one? Okay, when they claim the position, I found people were spending forever just trying to find the right verbiage for what they were looking for. After all, is it attorney or lawyer? You can have a foreclosure lawyer or a foreclosure attorney or an attorney for something, a lawyer for something. What else? Is it dentist, dental, or orthodontist, right? Roofing roofers, what? plumbers or residential plumbers in one spot and commercial plumbers in another, right? So people are going like this, trying to find what they're looking for because they didn't know you could just start typing here to quick search. Like if I'm thinking commercial plumbers, up, oh, no, there are none. That's not a thing. Residential, no. You know, plumber, aha, uh -huh, no plumbing company or something, right? What about dentist? Aha, uh -huh, what about uh, orthodontists? Ah, no. See, what, uh, what is in here as a lawyer? Oh, those things. You know, what is in here as an attorney? Ah, that. Here's another one. The higher the offset, the more expensive. The lower the offset, the less expensive, right? So if you had something like TV repair, it's an extremely low offset. Why? Because what are the chances anyone needs that, right? I mean, the competition is going to be so low that it's not hardly anything. I mean, unless somebody's too burned out in their television, they're just looking for the antique TV repair guy, right? Then there isn't going to be much competition for that. It's going to be so lot, it's so much easier to service it. Um, but you might say, what are the offsets? You know, you might be like uh, this offset, you know, and you might say one. Oh, wait, let me just uh, start typing to get this right. 1.5, okay, there you go, it's showing you all the 1.5s, what about the 2.0, nothing there, what about the 2.5, couple there, right, what about the 3, ah, something there, and the 3, you know, you just kind of figure things out this way, right, so it's pretty efficient, so we also found put it here, start typing the quick search, say you want to look for all the options that are in Indiana, I could do this whole thing, Right? There you go. Couple of counties in Indiana. I can already see them, you know. If I know a county, right, like Elkhart, uh, you know why it's not showing? Population's too low. It's below the cutoff at the bottom, right? So that way I don't have to bother focusing on it anymore. I could do King County. That's like where I live now. Aha, King County for New York and Washington, right? So that is useful. Anyway, those are three issues on my website and a fourth one becomes intuitive quickly because I watched the guy go here and I realized if he's just staring at this with no context at all, <laughs> he's just uh, here. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's what I mean. Like say he came to the link, right? And he has no context. None of this makes sense. I ought to have some links somewhere around here to the video to understand about positions. I ought to have something like that, right? Now, I've been leading people here myself on purpose, just telling them, go here and do this. So, you know, I don't think to put the video here. But if I watch, I'll see other people who saw different videos come here for different reasons. And then when, out of curiosity, they click on this thing, they have no context. They do not know what this is for, right? That's kind of dumb of me. I should put something there. All right. Having said that, the case I want to tell you about is... Um, I, I forget which website it was on, but carpet cleaning, somebody on the page we saw trying to hit the bolded print, and this actually turned out, I think it was like three different times you caught someone doing this, uh, trying to hit the bolded print that says, our chemicals are safe for children and pets, and they couldn't click it, and it was irritating to them. In one case, 
the guy tried clicking it like five times in a row and then he like zipped his mouse back and forth. You could see he was irritated. And then he started zooming all over the page, <laughs> like where the sidebar was and the top bar to see if he could find that link, right? It was just obvious. He was looking for that. We didn't have it there. And that's when you realize if you do see it once, you may not care. But if you see it a bunch of times, you should care. Why? Because the more someone's digging into your site to get the answer, the closer and closer they get to the sale for sure. If they start asking questions, that's where you want to say, yes, we have your answer. You bet we have your answer. There's your answer, right? You want to make this stuff clear. If he goes looking around and doesn't see it, now he has to decide if he wants to actually reach out and contact you or not. Maybe he doesn't want to waste the time when he thinks he can find someone else because you look like a commodity, commodity to him um, or her. Sorry. Uh, or he just doesn't want to get talked into something prematurely. He's not prepared yet, so he's not ready to talk to you. So he's too gun shy to call or her. <laughs> All right. This guy's got a quote for him. And you'll start filling out the quote. Okay. And you'll get to a point where you're saying, okay, here's the stuff I do or don't want, who knows. And this guy tried to hit this button and this button and he could not do it. And he wanted to add a slide. He wanted to say yes. And we create your art. Yes, he wanted to say yes to each of these things. He tried a bunch of times to hit these and he couldn't do it. And then he gave up and he went totally somewhere else looking for another form. Do you know how bad that is? That means his first thought is, you never really offer this. You don't really get these forms sent to you. Because if people can't hit these, they can't choose these, then you're not as good as you look. You look like you've been in business for a long time, but you haven't been, have you? You've probably never received these forms before, have you? Or somebody would have told you they could not add a slot. Uh, they could not, you know, have you create the art, right? So that's what people think. They just suddenly are suspicious about you, right? And um, I mean, he just wanted to see if he could find a different form. But what did we discover? How come that happened? This right here, this live chat function was a different one. And it would pop up on its own, take up a little space and say, hi, how may we help you today or something like that? Do you have any questions? Uh, said something like that. What we didn't know, what the, the guy who owned this site did not know, is it had a transparent backer on it for the whole big block so that it would look good on the page. Except that transparent backer happened to cover these two boxes somehow. And just the way the layout was for the art forced the backer to cover these two buttons in the process. But since it was transparent and non-clickable, that area, the, the background was a transparent background for this thing, uh, you couldn't tell, but you were trying to click on the transparent background that overlaid the buttons. So you could not click the buttons because the transparent background was in the way. That was the confusion. And I pointed it out to him. As soon as I put tracking on this guy's site, I think I looked at three or four recordings and I saw that in the third or fourth recording. And I just thought, why is this guy clicking these buttons and yet they won't click? So I went here on my own and tried. The exact same thing happened to me. And I got a hold of the guy and I said, hey, <laughs> I said, I, here's the recording. I showed him the recording. I said, here's a problem the guy had. And I just went and verified it and I see what's causing it. And he said, oh, I had no idea that was going on. I said, right. <laughs> People normally never tell you when they have a problem uh, filling out a form. They don't call you and tell you that the form doesn't work. They just don't trust you anymore. They don't want to call you and tell you. That. They want to go find your competitor now because they're scared that you're not as good as you look. Right? So I just asked him. I said, how long um, have you had this form up? The guy said, years. I said, how long have you had that... Um, live chat function there. He said, years. I said, so that live chat function has been covering those buttons for years? He said, I guess so. I said, you've got traffic every day. I said, I wonder how many sales you may have lost over that. And he said, thank you so much. And I said, 
thank yourself. You know, I asked you like two or three times to get the code on your website, but you finally did. And since you did, I could go and take a look. And I saw that, right? That's how important this is. Somebody can click a link and it's broken. They can click what looks like a link, but it won't click. And it could be that it clicks on my desktop and your laptop, but not their tablet or on their phone, right? So every kind of thing can go wrong. Sometimes the button points at the wrong place altogether. You hit, maybe somebody swapped these two. You go to submit and it empties the form and they thought it submitted, but it didn't. It cleared the fields, right? These things happen. Then you might think, well, if I was a website owner, I wouldn't be so sloppy. And the answer is that's not true. As a producer of websites for the longest time before we even decided that we could begin to get into monitoring, we made websites. We put tons of stuff out so that the mud would stick against the wall. And we could track the only way anyone can track. We'd see hits to the sites on Stack Counter, that kind of thing, right? You'd see when somebody clicked a URL and you hope it's a human and not a bot and you don't know. So for the longest time, everyone learned they can't learn anything about this. They cannot see anyone's actions on their pages. So they don't learn from the human traffic. They just wonder why so many come to their website, so many people, and no one's buying anything, okay? That's why we got so serious about being able to monitor upfront stuff that we generate to make sure it's in order and that everyone's having a good experience generally, okay? And it's not like we have to cater to every situation, but anything that looks like a trend or an issue that we ought to fix, we can just up and do it real quick now. Um, and so then the other thing is turn it over to the websites after that, set goals for the web pages and let the web pages work to rearrange themselves and watch the humans to make sure that things continue to move in the right direction and that the ROI can improve. The visibility can improve because a ranking improves because a page rearranges itself to hold people's attention longer and get them to want to click more things and track so that we can learn from that and teach the other websites the best statistics, right? Just download, assess, upload answers. Okay, real simple. Um, so with that in mind, well, yeah, there you have it. That's really what I wanted to say is that this is how incredibly important it is to monitor up front and we got into that, okay? So now we are dead serious about what happens on the page. We want to know who's a human, who's a bot, so we don't make those wrong decisions, right? If you have 100 hits on the page and only 20 hits to the video, or five, I'm sorry, does that mean that the video's underperforming? Well, if 80 of the hits to the page are bots, it's only 20 humans and five watch the video, video's doing great, okay? So don't change the video out for some other video because you think the video's underperforming. Well... If you don't really know who's a human and what's a bot, you would not know um, where those percentages are at all, okay? And that's why we built our admin panels to only track humans, to establish who's a human and track them, the interested guys, not the guys who bounce right off the top the moment after landing on the site, okay? Last thing I wanted to say, you might think, well, when people have other people build websites for them, don't they go through and check everything themselves? No, they don't. The reason they paid other people to build it for them is they really want the thing to build itself and be ready and work, right? That's what they paid for. Website developers, I've learned, don't know how to test everything. I, I watch programmers click things and get wrong results. And even when they're staring at the wrong result, they think it's working perfectly. And you might think, is that because they're overseas? The answer is no, every programmer does that. <laughs> uh, it's because they get so caught up in the coding that they notice that the function they did worked and they don't understand the rest of the common sense that surrounds it sometimes. So you've got to make sure your team includes QA. There's got to be QA for the back end, checking the functions, and then QA on the front end, checking the website the way a human would interact with the website. So we have that. Um, so we're very serious now about how humans feel and 
out of curiosity, start browsing through the pages and develop interest and get convinced and want to get engaged and do something, buy something, sign up for something, get the free something, whatever the heck it is, right? We have gotten into that monitoring recently and this is changing everything because we can tell everything that stopped anyone from buying before. So all you guys who go get a website from WordPress or Wix or Joomla, everyone who goes to ThemeForest and gets a template and you install it and you try to set up your who knows what, your Shopify, your Amazon FMB, who knows what, and you say, how come I'm not selling anything? I've got to ask, how much tracking are you doing? Well, mm, there's some hits to my website. <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah, got to actually know the answers. Okay, anyway, I'm just letting you know all this because we got done with the last of the tools that have to do with the, um, the controls of the website and being able to handle some of the toughest jobs that came through yet. I actually had three in a row that were really, really hard. And um, I'll explain that in a different video. Anyway, now that we're done and everything works, <laughs> and it works really, really well, then we're able to launch everything fast. Uh, and get everything up fast. So just letting you know, now's a really, really good time to get involved. So one way to do it is website-installer.com. Go to professional services if you want us to do websites for you. Okay, Put in what you're after, what you're trying to get accomplished in one of these, wherever it is you want to go. And then you can pay and it can be through credit card. Uh, it can be through PayPal and that's fine. And it goes all the way from low too high. It's just a question of how far you want to get into it. And keep in mind that we can now do subsets. So not just like different locations, different companies, but if your product or service has multiple different applications, then we can actually arrange the projects in such a way that like 20 are devoted to one of the applications across 20 metro areas. And then another 20 uses maybe the same metro areas, but a different application. So it's going after a different demographic altogether. Okay. And then you have a third one. <laughs> and it could be one of those two, but for a different area. Okay. It, a different set of metro areas. Okay. So it's literally up to the strategy of how you want to roll it out. It's not a problem. And then subscription plans. Basically, the idea is if you want to do a slow, gradual release, maybe it's better on your budget that way. And so you want to go for chunks. okay? And if you do want to jump ahead and go for the yearly, you'll notice it's get two months free, right? That's for one month. This is 10 months worth, which means you got two months free. okay? Same thing here. That's by the month, but this is 10 months worth, so you got two months free. Now, if you do pay annually, we'll make all the websites right now for much faster profits. Now, you might think, well, isn't that what you're doing up here? And the answer is yes. It's just different breakpoints. One website, three, ten. Uh, if you think twenty five hundred for a year, that's twelve. If you think uh, three times twelve, that's thirty six websites. Okay, so the numbers are just different. It gives you more options on the whole. Okay, I think that much makes sense. Everything there is really, really normal. And then, of course, if your idea is to get into the whole decrypt my leads thing, like you want to split profits. See, here you don't. You keep your profits, you have us do something. And so we build your project, basically hand it over, tell you to monitor it, and to let us know if there's issues, and we can help you through the issues pretty efficiently. On this end, what you're saying is, yeah, no, I want you to do everything you can to make us both money. Then you choose something here and you choose your county. And the higher the population, the more expensive because the more, po you know, the population, uh, the more um, competitive it is, right? Just something to keep in mind. But if you do that, what you're saying is split the profits with me. You keep half. I'll keep the other half. But you do all the work, okay? Don't, don't ask me for more money after this, okay? Just straight um, do all the monitoring and all the work yourself. And we will, right from getting the domains onward. 
You know, it's totally on our shoulders. This becomes our job uh, to build it, push it out, monitor it ourselves. And then as we make money, we hand half of it to you because you acted like the angel investor coming in. So you get half the profits for that reason. 50% of the profits, we get the other 50%. But we're the ones doing all the work. All you did was invest. Over here, this is more a done for you so that you can efficiently keep all your profits, but do the work. You can do the monitoring. Um, you can let us know if there are issues. We can tell you either create some articles in your website to answer those questions. This is what the guy's looking for. Or here's how you arrange this. Or here, we'll go ahead and do that because you don't know how, but it's easy for us. No, little things like that. That's a piece of cake. Okay, so it's two different worlds. The question is, where do you want to go? Do you want to kind of do it yourself or do you want us to do it for you? Some people do a little of both. Totally up to you. All right, other than that, uh, I'm going to let you go and hope you have a fun time and hope you figure out how you want to get involved. We are totally wrapped into GPT software, all the GPT power. There are parts of the websites that are running off GPT-4 right now. Uh, so whether you get the websites here or you're having us do it and we're doing it, we're using GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 in different combinations because 4 is much more expensive. So we know the balance between the two, um, when we can use 3.5 and when we need 4, okay? Uh, but we can do it and we can do it quick and efficiently by now, okay? It's taken a long time to build all the little tools to get here, but we're here. So yeah, everything that we've ever done for the past like half year, uh, it's just icing on the cake additions to it now and final touches. Uh, but as far as being able to build from scratch, we can do it now uh, very, very quickly and efficiently within just a couple of days or so. Theoretically, uh, I can do 100 websites in a day. And the only thing we'd be waiting for would be images over the next uh, like four or five days uh, to be created and installed. And that's if we go for a really widespread of templates, okay? All right. Yeah, widespread is where you want to attack a small geographic area with as many websites as possible. So you need template diversity. So we need to use a lot of templates. Uh, otherwise, I mean, we can use a smaller set of templates and just spread out geographically across the nation and Google's not going to mind that at all. Okay, so then it's easier to create the images because they all have the same X, Y uh, coordinates. Well, sorry, the same uh, <laughs> pixels of width by height <laughs> is what I should say, you know, for, for the different websites because the themes are the same. Okay, I think that makes sense. <laughs> well, other than that, if you got any questions, give me a call. Easy way to find me, website-installer.com, right up here at the top. Give me a call. And uh, that's great. You know, if you miss me, leave a voicemail. I get back to you when I can. Uh, if you're not in the country, easiest way to get a hold of me is with Skype. Okay. WMS Dave. WMS is for Website Marketing Solutions. Okay. And I'm Dave. So WMS Dave. All right. Hope you find this interesting. Can't wait to get you going. This is a brave and cool new world, and it's really good to build websites in this space. Most guys don't know how, so when you do, you'll just start out-competing your competition quickly. And the two things Google wants to see is that people want to spend more time on your pages and or click more links on your pages. And by watching the traffic and creating more doorways into the site, and then setting the websites to take it over from there with the goals, we can ensure it. That's the coolest thing in the world. All right, talk to you soon.